Hi guys, welcome to episode 42 of the Introducing Series. Today we're going to be discussing Texas rat snakes, Pantherophis obsoletus lindheimeri. Okay, so yes, those of you that keep up to date with scientific papers and taxonomy know that I just lied. But I lied for a reason. This snake no longer exists to science. It has been rolled in with the black rat snake, Pantherophis obsoletus obsoletus, to make the western rat snake, Pantherophis obsoletus. So, the hobby still recognises the Texas rat snake, and I'm not a scientist. So, let's let it ruffle their feathers and they can run for their safe space and chant ten holy Linnaeuses to try and put everything right with the world in the meantime. Us hobbyists can just crack on. As we've discussed in the past, taxonomy is built on shifting sands, and what is accepted and rammed down people's throats one minute is forgotten the next. I'll explain more about my problem with this later in the video uh, using the distribution maps that we've printed out. Texas rat snakes have always been in the hobby as long as I can remember, but boy did they used to have a reputation. Their wild caught ancestors had a fearsome rep amongst keepers. Only the craziest of keepers would want to work with them, because you were either going to get bitten like 50 times, or covered in a glorious mix of pee, musk and poo. Either way, you were not getting away unscathed, and they made damn sure of it. They were one of the most feared of the American rat snakes. Thankfully, their captive bred descendants are a lot easier to work with. Although the odd one will still have a stand and deliver attitude, and you just got to sort of work with that. Totally tame ones do exist, but they are not as commonplace as, say, the grey, yellow, or Everglades rats, which have generally a more even temperament across a large number of specimens. The natural form is becoming very scarce indeed in the UK hobby. One of its cultivars is actually more commonly available than the wild type, this, the leucistic. Incredibly sought after, incredibly popular, because this is a pure white snake with blue eyes. And of any royal python or ball python keeping people, no, leucistics are very popular. People love them. And these guys are old school. These are the OG leucistics, the ace man. Leucistics have been around as long as I can remember and an albino form as well which is particularly attractive because of the amount of black and orange the animal naturally carries. The albino is popping, it's ace looking. So uh, the problem that, that exists though with the leucistic gene where we seem to have ones that can get what we call boggle eyes which are almost like one and a half to two times normal size eyes. This looks perfect like quite attractive and cute almost anime-ish with the baby snakes um but they do appear a bit derpy when they're older with their eyes sort of pointing in all directions and going all over the place uh, and it can't be very pleasant for them so you know it, it keepers should be dissuaded from reproducing from animals with this condition to try and limit its spread through the population although it does seem to crop up haphazardly within the population as it breeds something to do with the leucism Natural coloration is browner, redder, and orange version of the grey rat snake. So up here we've printed out some little images of them for you. So we have got yellow rat snake, which is now the eastern rat snake. Grey rat snake, which is now the central rat snake. A Texas rat snake with lovely deep reds and oranges, tans and browns, with lovely yellow base colour and they have a lot of orange interstitial skin as well uh, and the black rat snake or pilot snake as some Americans know it uh, which this has now been grouped in with uh, which we'll get to again because it just blows my mind I don't understand it um, the, in Texas uh, Schultz, Klaus Diet Schultz in the monograph of genus Alaphi Fitzginger notes that they are restricted to the southern lowlands or coastal regions of Texas. As with all the American rat snakes, this is a highly adaptable species, utilising woodland, scrubland, rocky outcrop, farmland and disused buildings and human construction materials. Because of their origin, shedding is rarely, if ever, an issue with the UK climate, and generally this can be achieved without help. If you're in a particularly dry house or a new build, which are known to be quite dry, 
why a temporary mox box might help just to be able to shed the skin. Adult size varies, but records of upwards of seven feet in length exist, and this is a heavy set snake carrying much more mass than the grey rat snake, although not achieving the length of the black rat snake, which used to be the nominate form before reclassification. Um, the adult size average size is between five and a half and six and a half feet in length. And an adult vivarium should be around four, four, four feet by two feet by two feet. And this would be fine um, with the provision of a basking platform running at around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius and a cool end of 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. Nighttime basking temperatures can drop to 25 degrees Celsius with the cool side uh, dropping to room temperature. Dry substrates, shifting substrates such as beech, aspen, hemp or lignin cell can be used without issue. If you want to create a particulate mix, I've got no issue with that either uh, for naturalistic tanks. Uh, and, you know, you'd be able to come up with your own mix using things like the tortoise mixes that exist on the hobby, which are sand and soil cut with a bit of extra soil, a bit of grit, etc. Trying to make that sort of scrubland substrate. Just allow it to dry thoroughly, even the arid desert substrates in the bag come quite damp so let them air and dry off first before you introduce the snake uh, these snakes are ready climbers and explorers so opportunities to exercise and investigate their enclosure will be welcome adults are best treated from above using a ceramic heat emitter deep heat projector with a platform underneath or a spot bulb and these should be coupled to a reliable day and night dimming thermostat more rudimentary or temporary juvenile enclosures can be heated using heat pads uh, and owing to generally how hardy this species is they seem to fare fine with whatever heat source you choose just make sure you can control the temperature texas rat snakes as with all the american rats are egg layers and the brumation may or may not be required in captivity with them being one of the most southern forms if i were breeding them i would still brumate them to hedge my bets and ensure a strong sperm count in my male which is improved by the brumation process clutches of between 12 to 20 eggs are laid and these can be incubated in a mix of vermiculite to water four parts vermiculite to one part water inside an egg box within a polystyrene and incubator or you can go for a ban marie method if you prefer incubation temperature wants to be between 28 and 29 degrees celsius with an incubation duration of between 55 and 65 days babies are easy to rear and pose little if any problems although they might be particularly feisty as youngsters regular handling work should be instigated quickly to calm them down as much as possible so let me just cut back to what we have here is the ICUN red list distribution map for uh, Pantherophis obsoletus, which is now a single species. So ignore that black line intersecting, just that orange block there, that's now Pantherophis obsoletus. But what we're looking at here is the distribution map from basically the Rat Snake Bible by Klaus Dyer to Schultz, which shows the previously recognized distribution region of. Pantherophis obsoletus lindhimeri, this, the Texas rat snake. And then what it also shows is the vast distribution of Pantherophis obsoletus obsoletus, the black rat snake. And on the ICUN red list, they just seem to have completely forgot about this eastern part of the population. Um, doesn't make much sense. Because now the yellow and Everglades have been rolled in to create... Alleghaniensis, which is the eastern rat snake, and the central rat snake here, which was the grey rat snake, uh, Pantherophis obsoletus sploids, is now um, here. So it, it, I just, I can't fathom quite what's happened, and it seems odd calling a black rat snake a western rat snake when there are eastern populations, um, because they were they were demarked by. Their patternation changes. So Texas rat snakes remain patterned throughout their life cycle in natural form. Same as the grey rat snake. One could argue possibly the black rat snake. But as a black rat snake grows it diffuses out and becomes nearly solid black. The two eastern varieties, the yellow rat snake and Everglades rat snake, develop four stripes down the back. Although they were born with identical saddles to the Texas and grey. And it's that's an interesting process actually to watch take place. So just to give you a live example, here is a little wriglet. 
a little central rat snake or grey rat snake we produced earlier in the year. Had this been a Texas rat snake, the ground colour would have been a tan or orange uh, with the same sort of chestnut coloured uh, shaded saddles above. Honestly, rat snakes are really vastly underrated snakes and people are sleeping on them and it's such a shame because they're fantastic. Let me just pop this little guy back. So, climate data. Right, let's go through that now. We picked four separate regions of Texas, uh, two coastal regions and two inland regions moving north. The four regions were Comal County, which is given as the type locality for the species Lintamiri, uh, Galveston, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, and Wichita Falls, Texas. So, we can see that we've got a definitive hot and cold season. June, July, August is our peak with 35 and 36 degrees Celsius in certain regions. Certain other regions only peaking out at 31, 32. The animals would almost certainly be seeking shelter during these heightened periods during the day. Um, and then at night, uh, pretty much the same pattern with peak day, uh, nighttime temperatures at 23. Uh, and then the coolest winter nighttime lows down to about minus one. And it's from these periods, sort of up to April, and from October, that they would be brumating or hiding away. They wouldn't. They may have sporadic periods of activity, but for the most part in nature, they would be hidden away about 12, 13 degrees. They've had enough, they're gone. Uh, and they, they'll be asleep waiting for the more clement weather to return. Very strange with the rainfall, and maybe it's just because it's in the Gulf uh, of Mexico, you know, and, and the way it falls, but there seems to be a double peak with rainfall, with uh, one peak in May and another peak in September. Uh, but even then, we're calling them peaks compared to some of the tropical species we've studied. They're uh, barely blips with a peak of 41 mil as an average taken over the four separate zones. Uh, remember that um, in Manchester in January, it's about 36. It's about here. So, um, yeah, not particularly wet when we compare it to the other stuff. Definitely worth bearing in mind and taking into consideration simply wonderful this species was named in honor of ferdinand lindheimer a german botanist who resided in the german colony of new brown falls texas he is known as the father of texan botany and with 20 species in a genus named after him and the texas rat snake is occasionally referred to as lindheimer's rat snake in early texts Definitely don't sleep on this genus, Pantherophis. We take them for granted because corn snakes are genus Pantherophis, but the bigger cousins rock, all of them. Doesn't matter which one you choose. And yes, the hobby will continue to recognize things that science does not. That's what we do. Just because somebody says it doesn't exist anymore, if you've been keeping a line uh, and line breeding for 25 years of a certain type of snake, a scientist saying they don't exist anymore means nothing to you, nor should it, as long as we can keep them in standardized type colors we know what we're doing that's okay we'll see you all again soon with another video i hope you enjoyed that and an in-depth look at what is an often overlooked species the rocking texas rat snake cheers